When it comes to housing, commie blocks get a bad rap. We've all seen the depressing images from the former Soviet states of decaying grey blocks under a dark sky, surrounded by dead vegetation. The whole of it looks less like a residential area and more like a Resident Evil map, no pun intended. However, this impression may not be correct. What if I told you that commie blocks aren't that bad, actually? On the contrary, they're pretty good, both in terms of architecture and city planning. In many cases, they can even beat brand new housing development. But how is that possible? Let's find out. Following the Second World War, most people in Central Eastern Europe still lived in houses and apartments that had very few to no basic amenities. That meant an outside toilet, no bathroom, sometimes no separate rooms even, running water and electricity, maybe. Very often, three or even four generations shared a living space together. If you wanted to cook or heat, you had to chop some wood and make a fire. Bathing was often done in a portable water basin. All in all, in the 1950s Central Eastern Europe, most of the population lived in near medieval conditions even inside cities. Due to a growing urban population, industrialization and World War II destroying significant amounts of the housing stock, there was a severe housing crisis in many parts of the former Eastern Bloc. Traditional brick buildings, however, were slow to put up, relatively expensive and required a large workforce. To help alleviate these problems, Soviet planners came up with the architecture version of Lego. Factories were built all over the Eastern Bloc whose sole purpose was to manufacture standardized prefab concrete panels on an enormous scale. The idea was to build the foundation of the future apartment block and then just deliver a pile of prefab panels to the site where work keep putting them together until they have a building. And in theory, this would allow them to put up a shit ton of buildings quickly and cheaply. And it worked. From the 50s all the way till the 80s, enormous amounts of affordable housing was built in every major town and city, which effectively solved the housing crisis. So in terms of cost, time and capacity, commie blocks did great. The buildings themselves are of reasonably good quality, after all they're big hunks of concrete, it's pretty hard to mess that up. Of course there were some issues, such as top floor apartments leaking due to faulty roofs or elevators being prone to breakdowns, but aside from such minor issues, the overall result is positive. Aside from architecture, commie blocks also had a strong social aspect. In Budapest, at the time of inauguration, the Uipelota residential area mostly housed families moving in from the villages or the inner city. Peter Horvath, a photographer, was there in 1970 to document the moving in process and learn more about the new tenants' experiences. In practice, he helped a dozen or so families move in, and in exchange he got to take some pictures and ask a few questions. According to him, during one family's move-in, their little daughter, after exploring the whole apartment, reported to her parents in a state of amazement that the apartment has multiple rooms. The photographer's own grandmother also told a story about his mother and aunt, back then the same age as that little girl, about how it was almost impossible to drag them out of the bathroom. They were completely astounded by it, since in their previous apartment, in the 7th district, they could only bathe in a handheld basin. For the new tenants, commie blocks were near science fiction. Moving out of a dark, damp, smoky apartment without a toilet into a brand new, bright, modern apartment with every amenity inside. For a lot of people, commie blocks represented a civilizational leap forward. But the real secret of commie blocks is in the individual buildings. As I've mentioned, in terms of quality of life, commie blocks can beat even brand new housing development. And this is possible because of the urban planning surrounding them. In Hungary and across the Eastern Bloc, the new residential areas were built based on so-called complete planning. The designers paid attention not just to the amenities and services inside the buildings, but also outside them. Inside most of the Soviet era residential areas, to this day there are kindergartens, schools, doctor's offices, post offices, sports fields, parks, supermarkets, and so on. Everything you need for living in a city, all within walking distance from your home, or accessible through public transportation. The latter provided comfortable access to the rest of the city, great in terms of urban mobility. In many areas, the street plan was such that it didn't allow through traffic, which was an early iteration of superblocks. How cool is that? Since then, the Soviet times came to an end. A good riddance, if you ask me. But for all its negatives, like the one-party system, the media censorship, the police state, institutionalized corruption, nepotism, and so on, housing stands out as a rare, almost universal positive. Today, in the wake of regime changes and economic upheavals, many prefab residential areas have seen better days. But with proper landscaping and renovation, including facade insulation, these buildings can stand up to the best newly built. What many tenants of new developments find is that their neighborhood was built not for the sake of housing, first and foremost, but for making a profit. As a result, if the local legislation allows, many developers skimp on the public services and amenities and just focus on squeezing as many units as they can on the parcel. This can result in new development like this 
this one, with ground floor courtyard facing apartments that are best suitable for vampires because you won't be seeing any sunlight there. And this tightly packed quote unquote luxury development is just a few meters away from the commie blocks with plenty of space, greenery and amenities between them. All in all, commie blocks are pretty good. At least they can be, but for that the city and the tenants need to invest in the area. Thankfully, this is already happening throughout Central Eastern Europe with Germany having the wildest ideas in terms of renovation and also countries like Ukraine starting to catch up. Future prospects, in my opinion, could even include full-on car-free neighborhoods with additional vehicle tax and parking fees to further disincentivize car ownership. And how cool would that be? Commie block neighborhoods paving the way to the future of urbanism. Thank you for watching, don't forget to like and subscribe and do check out my Patreon if you wish to support me making this kind of content. And I'll be seeing you next time.